What's up you guys? So I thought I'd do another video on the middle game ideas. And um, so I've pulled up an unrated custom game, custom challenge, open challenge on chess.com against somebody rated 780, so quite a bit lower than my rapid rating. And this is a 60 minute game. Okay, so we've got a normal opening. I'm just going to play something very, very standard. I'm going to play the Italian, bring my bishop out. We want to get through the opening phase of the game. Let's push d3, build a light, light squared pawn chain. I'm not going to do any tricks at this point in time. I want to get my minor pieces out on the board. That's my first priority. Okay, my opponent now comes out with a check, so I have to deal with this. There's a couple of ways. I could put my bishop in the way. I could move my king, which I'm not going to do. I could move my knight back, which I'm not going to do. I could put this knight here, and then if takes, I recapture with the b pawn. Um, I'm going to put the knight there. I like my dark, dark squared bishop. I don't want to put it in harm's way. And I think if my opponent wants to do this, I will happily take the isolated a pawn and crack on with the game. So what are you going to do? Now this doesn't force the issue as well. It means black can very happily just leave his bishop there for the time being. All I'm going to do is I'll probably, if if he does something else like a pawn push for example, I'll probably play bishop d2 so that I, I can recap. Okay, interesting. So now he's actually threatening to come into d4 and attack the pinned piece with a knight. You notice that the knight is pinned on the king. So the knight physically can't move. Now, if I block here, but it, I mean, it's also directly just attacking my bishop anyway. So something must be done. Now I'm defending this twice. The knight does not count as a defender because it's pinned on the king. So if I take, he may take. He's not going to take with the queen, right? That's not going to happen because he loses queen. If I take a knight takes, then I don't have to do anything. I can just sit tight. Um, the other option is to drop the bishop back, but then that allows d4 hitting the knight. So I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to take the pawn, and I'm assuming the knight's going to recapture. And then I can simply just castle out of trouble. Okay, he's now got two attackers on here. All right, so before we do that, probably bishop d2. Then he's got two attackers, two defenders. Yeah, 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 it's fine. And if he takes, I'm going to recapture first with a pawn. I want to keep my bishop. Because I've got these light squared pawns in the centre here. So I want to keep my bishop. Because he's got quite a nice view of the board. This bishop right now could also be useful. Uh, well, right now he's not too useful. Okay, he's only got a few squares he can visit. Okay, there we go. Now the big question is, do we recapture with the bishop or just with the pawn? I'm going to recapture with the pawn, I think. And the reason is because um, I don't want to lose my bishop. If I take with the bishop and he takes, then I get an isolated a pawn anyway. So I may as well just bite the bullet. And also this comes with tempo, which means that now he has to move. He has to spend his next turn moving his bishop, right? If you notice, this knight has come on quite a journey. One, two, three, and then just like that, poof, he's gone. Okay, bishop moves here. Alrighty then. Um, so, uh, we're in a fairly good situation here. I've got three pieces developed into the board. I'm ready to castle. Black has two pieces developed and is ready to castle. The reason why I'm ahead in development is because of that. He spent three moves. He's invested three moves into that knight and the knight's now gone in a puff of smoke. So I'm thinking castles now. If I was to push here, he's got one, two, three, four attackers, and only one, two defenders, not good. Okay, so I'm gonna castle my king. It's from Norway, is it? Yeah. But he's playing he's playing well so far. So now I'm castled. The final step to development, which would actually take white into the middle game, 
would just be to get the queen off the back rank. Currently, I've only got one way of doing that in, in a single move, which would be queen e2. I don't mind that move. Okay, interesting. So now this knight is pinned. Again, this doesn't make sense. Um, this move may make sense. Because I'm threatening then his bishop, which in turn is undefended. Now, if he decides to trade, which is possible, then I can recapture with my f pawn, then opening up the f file for my rook. My knight's still fine. Let's go ahead and do this. Okay, now if he takes, I recapture here. Then I've opened up my f rook. And then also, the rook then defends the knight, which relieves the queen of being the defender of the knight, other than the pawn, because you don't want to recapture with that and open up the king, right? Okay, so he's taken, and we recapture now with the f pawn. So now I actually have three pawn islands, right? Black, to his credit, has only two. Now, interesting. Very interesting. He's attacking my bishop. Is this a, an attack with teeth? Not madly. Okay, option one. Drop back. If he takes, I retake with the C pawn is an idea. Or even retake with the A pawn. Yeah, I think probably A pawn. Can't go there because queen takes. Can't go there because pawn takes. I can't go there because king take. Aha. Okay, I spy with my little eye A pattern. Now, I'm, I don't think I'm going to do this. But I can actually win material here. The reason is because I've got my bishop looking at the F pawn and my opponent has pinned a knight on my queen, right? So bishop takes F7, check, is playable. If king takes, knight takes pawn with check, and then I get the bishop on the next move. That would win me two pawns, right? However, that is not the point of this game. Okay, that is a tactical trick that I know that wouldn't be terribly fair. So this is possible. Would probably just ask for c6, kicking the bishop away. So I'm going to drop my bishop back here. Okay. So we're going to forego that tactical idea, which would have won, it has to be said, two pawns. Right, so he's gone for this idea. He's, he's trading everything off, isn't he? Yeah, trading everything off. <sighs> it doesn't seem as though he wants to use his 60 minutes that he got himself here. Um, I actually have a, the same option now. Bishop takes f7 check. If king takes... I, no, I don't, because then actually that just gives up a bishop. Now, what I have to do is I have to uh, recapture. So I'm going to recapture with a queen. Recapturing with a rook doesn't make a lot of sense. It's nice to have your rooks connected on the back rank, so they defend each other. Um, I'm actually threatening mate in one now. Okay, so he's dodged that bullet. All right, so now we are in the middle game. Welcome to the middle game. Now, it's not a normal middle game because Tommy Matisiak has decided to exchange everything he physically could exchange. Now, so we are in the middle game. So we've completed development. How do we know we've completed development? Because our rooks are connected. Okay, that means we must have got all of our junk off the back rank and castle lucky. Simple. Now, what do we do in the middle game? Well, we have to learn to read the board and we want to make improvements to our position and we want to um, harm our opponent's position in equal measure if we can do. Now, right now, this guy's got a relatively equal position. Okay, To his credit, he's given me the three pawn islands, right? On the other hand, I've captured once towards the center. So, for example, this could be an idea. D4. So you, you think about pawn breaks in the middle game. 
but knowing that pawn breaks really kind of shake up the board. But here, for example, it's not a bad thing. So there, if takes, takes, and my B pawn has gone to C3, has gone to D4, and I'm controlling the center of the board. Now, it's not quite so big an issue now that so much stuff has been put back in the box. But it is an idea. Another thing that you can do is to look at strategic imbalances on the board. For example, the B file is semi-open, right? Or semi-open, depending on where you live. So putting a rook on the semi-open file does not, you know, has some, some merit to it as well. Another idea would be to, to think, well, how can I check my, my opponent, which is, you know, generally viewed as a good thing in chess. Um, so attacking here with my queen would seem to make sense, but in order to do that, it would need support from either the bishop, which would mean putting the bishop on this diagonal. How's that going to happen? Okay, that's one idea. Um, or maybe from a rook. And from a rook, it would mean moving the queen, probably lifting the rook and moving it sideways. So that's three moves away. However, idea number one, idea number one, please has potential legs. Now, this silly knight stuck out there on the rim, which is not a, an ideal place for a knight because it's only controlling four squares on the board, whereas it would be controlling maximum eight if it was in a better place, um, is looking at my bishop. I would prefer, with a wide open board like this, not to lose my bishop. So this brings me an idea. So the first thing I was looking at was, like, it's going to take me all day to move these knight, these pawns out of the way and to get my bishop like lurking here with a long range attack so that my queen could come in and boom, we win, right? Now, um, however, what about this idea? That's a much shorter route round. Now, coming here, it's attacked by the queen but defended, so we're happy, right? Also, it means that both bishop and queen on the same, same, same diagonal, potentially attacking b7. Now that creates an issue for my opponent. My opponent may then have to go, hmm, I don't like this. I'm going to push c6 and kick the bishop. And then the bishop drops back here. So let's see what happens. Great square for the bishop here, right? So we've now got a barrage against this. It's defended only by the knight, okay? But also we're still pinning this pawn here. This pawn cannot move, otherwise it would put the king in check. And you're not allowed to put your own king in check. It's against the laws of the game. And now this knight can't move forwards and do any damage because it just gets gobbled up by a pawn. Okay, so he's missed that. He's missed that threat of taking here. So I have the option of takes, and if knight takes, queen takes, and I've won myself a pawn. But we're not solely interested in that. I'm going to move my bishop here now. Right? Now this, has to be said, unpins this pawn. This pawn is now no longer pinned. This pawn is free to move if it wants to. Right? Can't move like that. It can only move there or there. Okay? I know you know that. Um, however, I still have this option. So, yes. So my idea is maybe queen here. Queen here, not a good idea because... Queen takes queen, and I have to recapture the g-pawn. It's not great. I mean, it's not the end of the world, because my opponent's then lost his queen, but there's no reason to give my um, to give black the option of that. Now, oh, so he spotted that. That's a good move. Well done. Well done. Because the other thing about putting the queen here is I'm looking at this pawn, which it has to be said is undefended. Right? This is defended. That's defended by the queen, that's defended. That, that, and currently that, 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 still undefended. So I could, for example, even just do queen eight, queen g3 at this point. Um, I could still go and grab the free pawn. And if knight takes, queen takes, um, is there anything gained? I could play d4 and trade off, but I'd rather get this pawn for free if I can. I'd, I'd rather keep this nice kind of block of pawns in the center. Um, so I think right now let's try, shall we do this? Shall we do this? Yeah, I'm gonna do this. 
because there's something else I like about this move, and it's that I'm lining up a major piece against my opponent's king. So, you know, this, this is middle game principles now, right? I'm, this is not a threat to my opponent, but it's potentially a threat, yeah? For example, if I was to put a piece or a pawn, or a, for example here, I could, I could now play bishop here, because what this does is it pins this pawn, this guy on g6, right? Now, I could play my bishop here, and the queen can't take it, because rook takes, yeah? That, that, bang, rook takes, and this pawn can't recapture, because it's still pinned, right? And obviously, if I put my bishop here, the pawn can't take it, because it's pinned. So slightly unpleasant. And a lot of chess is about doing, lining up unpleasant ideas towards your, your opponent. Ha, huh. okay. So he's come here, has he? Why? What are you thinking? Is he defending this? Now, one idea that jumps to mind is h4, h5. This is a typical idea. Why is h4, h5 an, an idea, and why is it jumping into my brain? Well, it's because Gary has shifted off his blocks. Gary has made himself into what is known as a hook. Now, I know why my opponent's done this move, because it's defending the pawn. Obvs. Now, h4, h5. This is what's known as a pawn break. And it's a bit like, <clears throat> if you've ever seen crown bowling or indoor bowling. Now, this is different to lane bowling, like tempin bowling. Um, but sometimes, so this is where you want to get the balls, your balls, to be near... Uh, or same in curling, if you've seen curling at like Winter Olympics. You want to get near, nearest to the jack, okay? And sometimes, if you're just, you can't get in, and there's no direct way in or good way in, then sometimes you just smash. You just do a big old whoosh, and try and just obliterate and knock all the balls out of the way so nobody wins, okay? Sometimes this is a bit like that. A pawn break can be seen as a dramatic change to the playing field. So what I'm liking about this idea is h4, h5, remember, this guy's pinned. And if I can get Harry to here, we've got one, two, three attackers on there. And he can't capture. And he can't move forwards because queen takes and check. So let's play h4, yeah? Let's just, before we do that, let's just see if there's anything else that's better than that. I like the fact this knight's out of the game. Knight could come back there. There's this queen is not pinned. Both my my queen and his queen are actually defended by pawns. So there's no thought about d4, right? I mean, I will normally look at if I've got enough time. I'll look at every legal move there is on the board, particularly when things get as simple as they are now. If this queen wasn't defended, for example, if the pawn was there, then this would be a move because pawn again, pawn can't take because I, I would take the queen and win, right? But no, I'm going to play h4. And we will see what Tommy decides to do. Tommy has been playing a solid game so far, right? Um, he missed the bishop f7 sack, which was possible twice. But, uh, you know, at 780... Oh, good move, son. Good move. H5. H5. Now, the first thing that springs to mind again is... And this is just pattern recognition again, right? I know this pawn is pinned. And a p -p pinned piece is not a p -p -p protector of any other p -p piece. <laughs> right? So it looks as though this pawn is defended by this pawn. It ain't. Because this pawn's pinned and cannot move, right? So if I, for example, was to drop my bishop back to f3, I can take that pawn for free because this guy can't recapture and a quick sanity check around the board to check there's no silliness going on. Well, there's no silliness, so let's drop the bishop back with the idea of capturing on here. Boom. Okay, now that was played quite quickly. And it's interesting because he's got ideas. Well, well, well. Look what we have here. 
Okay, he's he's forking two of my my things, two of my pawns, right? Now this guy I'm less concerned about, right? He's just a glorified B pawn anyway. Now I could, for example, save that pawn by pushing C4, but then Queen takes there with check. And then on the next move, I can't do anything other than save my king, which basically means move my king out of the way. So I can also protect this pawn. For example, I can play my queen back here, in which case I'll probably take. Or I could push d4. In which case, if he takes here, I can take there. But then he can take there. See? Hmm. Now, one other idea is to defend this pawn with my queen. What? How is that possible, you say? Well, by doing this move. Bishop takes h5 anyway, right? Is a discovered defense on that pawn by the queen. So let's think. Bishop takes there. Queen takes here. Now I have to keep my queen on this g file or else this pawn is no longer pinned and can capture my bishop. So you need to be a bit careful there. Okay, now let's have a think. Let's have a good old think. Because I also need to protect this. Oh, uh, yeah. So, I mean, this pawn is likely to fall anyway. I'm, I'm not too concerned there. Um, do I want to do this? Bishop takes there. Queen takes free pawn. Can, how do I defend this now? I can't lift a rook, for example, because the queen's going to be here. And I've then disconnected my rooks, haven't I? So the queen could grab that rook and, and go on and win. Not good. I could even think about saving this pawn and allow my opponent to take that one. Now that wouldn't be... Uh, it comes with check anyway. I just don't want that. I do not want that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to capture here. I'm going to let him take here. And... I'm checking whether there's actually a, a forced win um, if he goes ahead and does this. Could I, for example, let's say the queen's on here. Could I take, pawn takes, queen takes, check. There's only one legal move because the queen's here and the pawn's in the way. So the queen can't block, right? So my queen's on here, his king's here, has to go here. Could I bring my rook up there? Takes, ta okay, so first of all, takes, queen's out the way. Takes, takes, queen takes. Oh, then the rooks are facing off. Yeah, so queen's here. Takes, takes, queen takes. He hasn't got time to take my rook. King has to go here. Queen can go here. King has to go back. Don't know. Not sure, can't see it. Another thing is, as, as well, I can't defend the pawn with a bishop d2 for the same reason I disconnect my rooks and I lose my rook. I can't take here because queen currently defends. Now, queen also defends that one. So this is not bad. Um, I'd still like to push h5 at some point as well. <sighs> takes, 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 rook takes, 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 queen takes check, king goes here. Um, No, no, I do not see. The 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 king that's forced. I have queen h6. King has to go back. Doesn't help me in the slightest. Queen is here. King is here. Nah. Okay. So what I'm going to do? 
So I'm also in two minds about pushing this pawn because after the queen takes here, the queen's actually still on that diagonal as well. So do I just drop my bishop back to there and then this? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to go back to the h5 idea. So I've, I kind of grabbed a free pawn there. Now I could lose a pawn here, but if he takes there, I have bishop to e4. Right? And bishop to e4 here, notice, a bishop on this square is defended by the pawn and in turn defends the pawn, which is no bad thing. So he has a free pawn now. He can go up one pawn. Right, there we go. So I'm going to play this move. Now he may be tempted to play this, which I think would be very not good. Reason is I can just take it. Just take it, for example, with my bishop. So also now that the bishop's moved here, the queen defends this. Okay, So everything is now defended. And really, really important, my rooks are still connected on the back rank. This rook defends this, king defends this, queen defends this, bishop defends this in turn, and queen defends that. Okay, So I have coordination. Everything on the... Whoa! Hello there. Okay, first thing that jumps into mind is h5. What you want to know is why. Well, look, the king has moved from here, where the pawn was pinned by the queen, to here, where the pawn is still pinned but now by the bishop. So again, I want to attack the pinned piece. So I'm going to push h5. I do like these, uh, these slower games for explaining the process. It really is interesting. Notice also this pawn is undefended. Was that undefended on the last turn as well? Yep. Yeah. It appears that I missed that entirely. Okay, now the rook has moved from here to here. Now, first thing that you should do on any time your opponent makes a move, after your, your opponent's made a move, what's changed? What's he attacking? And what's he undefending? Well, he's undefended this pawn. So, one thing that jumps to mind is this with check. Now, then I have to anticipate he's going to block with his rook. Then I need to figure out, is that a good thing or a bad thing? First thing I need to figure out is, if I, for example, just retreat my rook or just something, is this rook safe? Because I've unpaired them. Well, yes, it is. The other thing I notice is, I take... Um, even if rook blocks, I still have this. So... Let me show you. I'm going to go ahead and take. If he blocks, I've got pawn takes with check. Now the king has to move. The king can only move there, there, or there because the rook's here. Okay. So now, but I also actually have bishop takes too. That bishop takes could be deeply unpleasant. So now what are we doing? Well, now we are, we smell blood, right? Now I'm trying to figure out, can I win the game? in short order. And it appears as though there are opportunities. Bishop takes is attractive with check. Right? Pawn takes also defends the rook, also comes with check. King again has to go there, there or there. Right? I think pawn takes. I like pawn takes. And I'll tell you why. <clears throat> yeah, it comes with check. Same with bishop. But it also opens up the whole h-file. So, for example, if the king goes here, I have queen there, check. Then the king has to go here. I can also take the rook on the next turn. Okay, so now we have many options that we have to consider carefully. I have candidate move number one. Rook takes rook. I'm actually up a pawn at this point, right? Candidate move number two. So that's one, two. Queen takes. Okay. Rook can't take pawn because defended by bishop. Happy days. 
I'm liking queen takes. Why? Because it puts two attackers on this. And I'm threatening mate in one. Um, any uh, third candidate moves? Well, I, I know that my brain just considered uh, rook a to f1. By the way, this move would be known in chess notation as rook 7 to f1. Okay, to distinguish it from these. Right? Just, just so you know. Um, that's an idea. Although it seems a little bit slower. This is also an idea. With the option of, for example, rook here with a discovered check. That's kind of nice. But I think the simplest option is queen to here. Now I need to ask the question, if I do that, does my opponent have an aggressive, horrible resource? I don't think I can see one. The other nice thing about this is that I'm also defending that, in addition to attacking that and threatening mate in one. So what can my opponent do to prevent checkmate? Well, he can't put his king in the corner because queen takes rook is mate. Um, He can't play rook to here because queen takes rook is mate. If he plays rook to here, I just take with check. Oh, hang on, but then king can take mine. I think that might be the best move. I think that might be the only move, I suspect. So if this is here, No, if, the, if rook goes there, rook takes rook. And it's going to be checkmate very soon. Yeah, rook here. I take with my rook. I win a rook. All good. So, what happens now? Now, he could take my rook, in which case I recapture the pawn with check. King takes pawn. Probably then rook f1 check, and then he's going to get ladder mated because I've got a queen here and a rook here, and the king's on this square, yeah? So the king has to go to one of these squares. Let's put him in blue. Then I've got like queen here. Oh, it's not immediate, actually. It's a bit of a pain. Now I think he has to take my rook. Can he just take my rook? Can he do that? I think, yeah, I think this is the better move, yeah. Rook, rook h7 isn't playable. He must take that. Okay. And now... I have to take back. There's nothing else for it. And now, pretty much the king's obliged to recapture the pawn, eh? Yeah. So, again, we stop. Now I'm a pawn up at this point, but look at this crap knight. Still can't go there, still can't go there, right? Move to the edge of the board, not very good. Okay, so now, obviously, we're in the, in the ending, deep in the ending. Um, rook f1 check makes a lot of sense. It's going to force the king to there or there. Can't go there because of the queen. Oh, can't go there because of the bishop. Okay, this is interesting. This is useful information, thank you. Check, king has to go on the back rank. Okay, I'm going to play it. And I'm going to figure out the rest as we go. He has to go here, does he not? Then I believe I have bishop there check. I do indeed, right. Bishop here, king can't go there. King has to go here. Okay, so I've got bishop there, I've got king there. Yeah. Again, there's only one legal move. My rook covers all these. My queen covers the dark diagonal. He's in check from the bishop now. He has to go here. All right. And now, how do we close the net? I want to keep checking the bugger. So that's a check. And he's got one, two, three, four options. Not that one. Um, but we are getting closer. So I, I need, you see, what I want to do is I want to be able to move my rook here, but king is in the way, right? And I, I don't want to do anything that doesn't involve the C word. So let's throw in a check here. If 
If he goes on the back rank, could even think about this. Rook has to take, queen takes, he has to go back here. And then I've got bishop check. There might be something in that. There might be something there. Another <laughs> sexy idea is bishop here to win the queen, but that's... Um, his pawn's in the way right now. I can see, I'm just noticing the pattern. The king and queen are on the same lines. Okay, there we go. So, questions. Questions, questions. Rook here is a thought. It forces rook takes, queen takes. King has to go here. Bishop here, check. My queen's here. That's mate. I believe, I do believe that's mate. Let's just check. All right, queen takes. So the queen's guarding all of these squares. The king can only go to here, and then bishop here, and he's out of squares. There we go. This is a forced mate in two. All right, how do I know? Because I did it on my fingers and thumbs. Do believe that's check. Oh, Tommy looks about seven. Bless his soul. Good game though, Tommy. Well done. You did very well there. Very well indeed. So guys, I hope that was interesting. I hope that was useful. It's nice to do a slower game. Somebody said, you know, that, what, why do you keep playing these blitz? Can we have a slower game? Well, yes. There you go. 60 minute game. My opponent lost in 11 and a half minutes of, of his own clock. But for somebody rated 780 at Rapid, Tommy, you've done well, my son. You've done well. Right, um, he played very well, and in fact, when you're playing somebody who looks seems to be a lot stronger than you, simplifying down is not a bad tactic. You know, it, it, it you can end up with a draw, or you can end up sometimes with even a lucky win um, by simplifying the game. Keeping the game complex is much more likely to benefit the stronger player. But yeah, very interesting and enjoyable game. Um, it's just interesting that, that he missed this um, and this pattern I, I really want to show you this pattern okay here so I've, I've mentioned it before in my videos when you have a bishop in the Italian position okay as both of these bishops are so in my case my bishop's on c4 in black's case it's on c5 right so you have a bishop in the Italian position c4 or in fact anywhere on this on this di same diagonal and your opponent pins your knight on your queen, right? Again, a very, very common situation. Then you have this idea. Boom. And the king can't take. Because if the king takes... Oh, hang on. Yeah. Ah, I thought I had this. Well, I, I kind of do, but actually this. Hang on. No, he's in check. No, but queen can take. Queen takes, I take. I, I, I missed that completely. I missed that queen could take. And I'm up slightly. And no, I'm not. No, I was wrong. That, that setup did not work. And the reason it didn't work is because the squares that my knight could move to with check were not free. Okay. So the check has to force the king to move again, right? So I can't go here because queen covers. I can't go here because knight covers, right? And that's why it didn't work. So, but this is how the game went. And then still the same situation. Interesting stuff. So there you go. But yeah, you, you, you know, this, this is like in parentheses, you have to check this. So with this as, a, as an option, you have to check that your knight can move and check the king if it goes to f2, f7, right, and not be captured itself, which is not the case in this example. So I stand corrected, but at least I've corrected myself. So you don't have to bother doing it. Having said that, there's going to be a whole load of people in the comments who go, eh, you can't do that in because you, you map it. You absolute map it. Yeah, but, you know, watch to the end. And I figured it out for myself, isn't it? All right, thanks for watching, everyone. See you soon.